What's up everybody? There's some behind the scenes sneaky scripted events that will be happening on your new server. One of which is during your server's week 3, at least based off how beta went and it is a pack summon event for a limited time hero. You may have seen the icon in the tier list, you may have heard her name in the discord, and you're wondering where the heck is this hero who's not in the gallery in the game? Well, it's Vespa, and here's the breakdown. Let's get it. <laughs> A mistake I made is when I started this game on the beta servers, I joined the latest server which was server 9. Now the issue was, it was already a week old. So without even knowing, during my week 2, I'll put a screenshot up right here. Now it wasn't for Vespa, but it was for Peria. However, they must have done a name change because if I look at my roster right now, my Peria is now named pa Palais. Not sure what the deal is with that, but regardless, no matter the time you join, you also have your week 1, 2, 3, and so far 4 beginner quest weeks, but the server events like these pack summons seem to be server age specific. Now before speculating about this event, showcasing uh, Vespa's skills and then Pele, I guess we now call her, I briefly wanted to explain what pack summons are. So pack summons will be your big source of gem usage. Of course there's others like for mana, evo stones, chaotic dolls, legendary or mythic guide shards, etc. But pack summons allow you to target a specific hero in the game that's available in the rotation. So currently on my global account, here it is on the screen, one popped up at the start of week two and the options here, if we go to the events, we go to pack summons and we go to change, these are going to be the options. You got Octasia, you got Snyder, one, two, three, four, five, and six. So you only have eight options in this rotation currently. And I'm not really going to go into detail right here about why I chose Octasia. I'll explain that in a video when my week two ends, but there's going to be two sets of pities here. If you click on the information button, you can see right here that for regular factions, so that's going to be like Beastly, Natural, or Alchemistic, which is basically your trio monsters, it's going to be 80. And then for Chaotic Monsters, which of course is your rare faction heroes like Draconic and Abyssal, the pity is going to be 120. And when I say pity, that just means the amount of summons. The main thing to understand here is these are hard capped each day at 20 summons with gems. Do I agree with this? Of course not. If you want to save up until one of these events pop up with the hero or heroes you're looking for, you shouldn't be penalized with a gem cap. Go all out, use 50,000, 100,000, 200,000 saved up gems, however many you want in the event duration. At the very least, they need to increase it higher than 20. The only other option would be to spend money if you go for the call for help here, uh, to spend money to get these Demon Lord Blood Packs. These will be your additional summons outside gems. So if the event lasts 7 days, which these do, at 2700 gems a 10 pull, 5400 a day since you can only do 20 summons worth of gems, that means for these pack summon events, if you want to max out, you'll need 37,800 gems. An in-game calendar or maybe posted on their social media, whether that's in Discord or on their Facebook, would be very helpful so you can plan ahead and be like, okay, so in two weeks, I need this amount of gems, but if it's not the heroes that you want, you can use those gems on something else rather than saving up. 37,800 gems will get you 140 summons if you add in your one free a day, for the event duration, you are looking at 147 summons as a free to play. Pretty simple stuff here. Remember those pity numbers. I'll open it up on the screen again. As a free to play, you will be guaranteed to hit either pity if you have the gems to spare, but you may get lucky for multiple copies. You kind of have to assess your lineup. You got to see what it's lacking, what hero dupes you may need and go from there. Due to how the food works with these chaotic dolls for draconic and abyssal heroes, I would suggest focusing on the regular factions first, so if you go to change here, you have Coronis, you have Venus, you have Reddy, can't remember this hero's name, but, but basically you're regular faction heroes, which means they're going to have a lower pity, easier to build, less progression walls, but once again, it is based off your playstyle and what you feel your roster is lacking. Playstyle is like, are you a spender? Are you free to play? Do you think more short term or long term? Do you like saving? Or would you rather just use stuff as soon as you get it? The good thing is the pity does carry over. So if you stop this event at say 20 summons shy of hitting pity for the guaranteed hero, next time this pack summon event comes back, you only need to do those 20 summons to hit the pity. That's pretty much it. Um, as for the summon pool, it has good rewards. We can click right here. You have a 1.1% chance to get the hero you chose before pity. You have a 4.9% chance to get a random 5-star monster. 
0.2 for six star regular faction doll, 0.1%, 20,000 gems. And like I said, on my free to play from my beta account, I actually hit this, which was crazy luck. I've never done that in a game. And then you have gear and gems and other sorts of uh, resources. Now the difference between this and the limited time pack summon, say for Vespa or Palais, uh, is there's only one hero to choose from, of course, and this is separate from the other pack summon, so the pities are not shared. So who is Vespa? Bringing up her skills on the screen, Vespa is an abyssal magic damage based hero who has an ultimate skill charm ability, which already sounds broken, where the enemies who are charmed attack each other. Already the fight changes in your favor, although it doesn't say how many enemies, it just says a large range, so maybe just the ones in that area. She has an energy reduction skill for two enemies, energy is what's needed in order to use your hero's ultimate, so prolonging this means the enemy won't be as effective as quickly as they should be. Um, and then for the next skill, it's another wild one here where she steals HP from an enemy, Although it's not very clear how this skill works, is this like a lifesteal where the HP she steals can heal herself, or is she just simply removing some of the enemy's HP? And then for her last one, which will be a passive, when the battle starts increases all allies attack by 10% and haste by 10 for 10 seconds. So haste from my understanding is just how fast your heroes attack, kind of like attack speed, or maybe it lowers the cooldown of your hero's skills. I've played games where haste does either of these or simply both of these. This of course can be increased as you star her up. So I mean yeah, like limited time hero Vespa, it's safe to say she sounds broken, probably why in the tier list she's rated at the top, not only due to her limited attainability, but because of that skill set. Moving over to Peria, honestly it just sounds better than Palais. Um, and then from the screenshot I took, once again, I'm not making this up, her name was definitely Perrier you blah blah, but Perrier is a draconic physical damage based hero who has a pretty nuts ultimate skill that does basically one shot potential damage, and if it defeats the enemy, gains back a lot of energy basically to alt again. Honestly, this is a pretty scary move and also does three times the damage if the enemy is below a certain amount of HP. The next skill is an AoE attack that reduces the enemy's death. To ensure more damage from Palais, I'm gonna be swapping back and forth here with the names. I just still don't understand why the hero went through a name change. But anyways, to ensure more damage from your team on the enemies. Next skill is a damaging CC, which means crowd control in the form of a stun, which is good, of course, for locking down an enemy. And then for the very interesting skill here, at the beginning of the battle, releases an anchor to pull an enemy over. This is actually really handy, and it's a good thing I was able to get a copy of her, because if you place her in a specific spot, so I can show you this on screen, she pulls the opposite enemy. So if you're back left, um, she's going to pull the enemy that's back right, opposite, back right is going to be back left, middle is middle, etc. It can be really nice for targeting a high threat, and how the DPS focus works in this game, or at least how it looks to work, is the closest enemies get targeted. So in this example, when Peria pulls the enemy Octasia to my side, my Lilith, even though on the back right, is going to swap focus to her since she becomes the closest enemy instead of Snyder. So just like Vespa, it's safe to say she sounds broken and why rated so highly in the tier list. I am still leaning towards Vespa being the more popular choice because her skill kit works in every situation while Peria seems to be more situational. Probably the biggest question I have is how are they going to do this in global? Is it going to be just a Vespa banner and then eventually Peria banner follows or will it be a customized option of choosing one of the two? I'm leaning towards them both having their own pack summon, but you just never know. Honestly, either of them sound broken, so it's hard to say who to go for since they are limited time heroes. I will probably base it off my lineup I have at the time, and of course what my gems are looking like, as there is no actual set in stone date for them to show up. This is just speculation. Let me know down in the comments who you think sounds the most interesting. And also another reason why I think Vespa is coming soon is because of that little teaser image they showed regarding the three eggs. There's already confirmed an Easter event coming, which is going to be this weekend. You can see by the date right here, March 31st. And the egg in the middle looks much different than the left and the right. The middle egg has that dark and purple hue to signify to me the Abyssal faction. And the heart could symbolize Vespa. All her skills are named like Seduction, Kiss, Temptation, Desire, plus the fact that there looks to be a giant heart behind her in her hero portrait. So in my opinion, I'd make sure you have those gems just in case she does show up for your servers week three. So for my global account, that will be this Sunday.
As always, thanks for watching and stay tuned for the next one. Thank you.